So what's the relationship between the current account and the financial account? One thing we need to know about the balance of payments is that it will always be in balance. In other words, if there is a surplus in one account, there must by definition be a deficit in the other account. So let's look over here on the right. How do we clarify this? If there is a surplus in the current account, in other words, if A is greater than B, this represents a current account surplus, then there must be a deficit in the financial account. D must be greater than C, which is a financial account deficit. Why is this the case? Well, if a country runs a current account surplus, it means there is more money flowing into the economy from trade with the rest of the world and transfer of incomes than there is leaving the economy. What will a country do with the extra funds it acquires from its transactions in the current account? Well, it could hold on to that as cash. In this case, there would be an increase in official reserves, as we see down here, which counts as a negative in the financial account since foreign exchange is an asset of another country being held by the country that has a trade or current account surplus. However, it may not be in the interest of a country to accumulate foreign exchange reserves. So what will it do with that money instead? What it will do is invest in foreign assets. The money that a country accumulates from its current account surplus will ultimately be reinvested in the financial account of the countries with which it has a trade surplus. Domestic investors will use some of that accumulated foreign exchange in order to buy foreign assets. They may build factories abroad. They may acquire stocks, bonds, real estate, or land abroad. All of these transactions would be counted as a negative in the country's financial account, and they are made possible due to a surplus or a positive in the current account. What if, on the other hand, a country was running a current account deficit? In other words, if B were greater than A, this would be recorded as a current account deficit. If this were the case, then by definition, the financial account must be in surplus. So C must be greater than D, meaning there's a financial account surplus. Let's use an actual example here. Assume Switzerland runs a current account deficit. It spends more on imports from abroad than it earns from the sale of exports to the rest of the world. There is now more Swiss currency accumulating in other countries due to our trade imbalance with other countries. What are foreign countries that acquire Swiss francs going to do with those Swiss francs? Well, one thing they could do is hold on to those francs as official reserves. If this happens, then this would lead to a decrease in Switzerland's official reserves of foreign exchange and a positive in the financial account because there are now Swiss francs, which is an asset from Switzerland that are owned by foreign central banks. The ownership of Swiss francs by foreign central banks counts as a positive in Switzerland's financial account since Swiss francs are an asset of Switzerland. However, it's unlikely that foreigners will want to hold on to Swiss francs since they do not earn interest and they might lose their value due to inflation over time. So foreigners are instead going to invest that money in Swiss assets. They might acquire 10% or more of a Swiss firm. They might acquire physical capital in Switzerland. Or they might buy Swiss stocks, government bonds, corporate bonds, real estate, or land. These foreign investments in the Swiss economy made possible by Switzerland's current account deficit count as a positive in Switzerland's financial account. So anytime there is a current account deficit, it must be made up for as a surplus in the financial account. What are the implications of this for the balance of payments overall? What we're going to see is that no matter what a country's current account balance is, A plus B represents the current account balance. So it could be negative, it could be positive. Whatever it is, this is the current account. If we add the current account balance, A plus B, to the financial account balance, that's C plus D, whether it's positive or negative, this is the financial account, the resulting sum of these two accounts must be zero. In other words, it must be in balance. Any surplus in the current account will be made up for by a deficit in the financial account and vice versa. Money leaving the economy must ultimately return to the nation's economy either 
for the purchase of the country's goods and services as income transfers or as investments by foreign entities in domestic assets. This is the gist of the balance of payments. The current account and financial account must always balance out to zero. Any surplus in one account must be made up for by a deficit in the other account. And that wraps up our lesson on balance of payments. This was a big one. We started with a definition of balance of payments. Then we broke the balance of payments into the two accounts, which measure the flow of money between one nation and the rest of the world for the purchase of goods and services, transfers of income, and the investments by domestic entities abroad or by foreign entities at home in financial and real assets. And we concluded by showing that a nation's current and financial account balances must always equal out to zero. Any deficit in one account will be made up for by a surplus in the other account. Here we go.